Now let's talk about this buffer overflow. As the name suggests, we simply overflow the buffer. And the buffer is the space where we will store our variable values and the arrays kind of things as well. Right? So buffer is the space where we will store our variables for let's say. And for example, the size of this buffer for this current function that we are using is 10 bytes. It means it can store up to 10 characters. Simple. Now in case of buffer overflow, we simply flood the buffer space and to flood this we have to pass data more than these 10 characters because buffer can accommodate 10 characters and to flood it we have to pass more data and when we pass more data for example if we pass 13 characters out of those 13 10 will be passed to the buffer space and the rest 3 will be passed to this base address now for example the current value of the base address looks something like 0x4567 simple because we know it take 4 bytes so this is the address for example this is the current value when you pass 13 character the value will be overwritten and value will become something like 0x7 a a a and done for example let's say you pass 13 a's right a multiplied by 13 simple if you pass these 13 a's then 10 a's will be kept inside this buffer space and the 3 will be sent to this base address now when this kind of situation occur you we usually get an error called segmentation fault. Now segmentation fault is the error that we usually get when the address is pointing to some null value or some invalid address. And let's say if you don't have permission to go to this particular location, even then you will get this segmentation fault. So segmentation fault is the error that you will get if the address of this base pointer or the return address or return pointer is not valid and in our case if the address is not valid or if it points to somewhere which we don't have permissions for example let's say if the address belongs to some other application or let's say the stack frame from some other library of the application itself right even in that case we will get this segmentation fault and when we overwrite these base addresses it is usually considered under memory corruption so buffer overflow is again a part of memory corruption where we corrupt the memory and then try to control the execution flow so we corrupt the memory by buffer overflow and just by flooding the buffer then what we will do after flooding the buffer we will control the EIP address because just by controlling the EIP which is just here which points to the next instruction that will be executing if we can control the next instruction then we can point it to our payload simple and just by pointing it to payload we can execute our payload and then we can perform our malicious actions out there simple case now for example let's say to complete all these processes to flood the buffer control the eip you pass some data let me just give you a simple example for that so i am just cleaning this up let's clean this this one this one and this one too so instead of passing these 13 characters let's say you pass 30 characters this time but instead of passing 30 a's you will statically or you can say with a proper structure you will pass the data this time so instead of passing random 30 a's you will pass them statically the data now what you will do you will pass 10 characters to the buffer that's fixed now instead of passing 3 you will pass 4 characters to the 
a so for multiply a will be passed to this base address now 10 multiplied by a will be passed to this buffer space now it comes the eip so eip always controls the instruction so instead of passing random a's to this eip which will cause the segmentation fault and we don't want to cause an error because in general case when we get segmentation fault application get crashed so instead of crashing the application we want to execute our payload we don't want the application to be crashed we just want to execute our payload and to do that we point the eip to another instruction which is jmp esp this is an assembly instruction which again says you have to jump back to the address which is esp pointing so esp we know that esp is the address usb is the pointer which points to the lowest address in the memory now we get the eip which points to this jump esp and for example let's say the address of this jump esp command is 0x and 1 2 3 4 for simplicity now we get the eip value now the rest of the character we have 12 characters left so 12 character are our payload simple now let's first understand when we pass this 30 character how this 30 characters will be handled by our stack frame so we get out of those 30 we get 10 a's 4 a's then jump asp address and 12 characters for the payload simple now let's fill this stack frame. so we get 10 multiply by a for this buffer space we got 4 multiplied by a for this base address and then we get the address as 0x1234 for this return address and the rest of the 12 characters will be passed to this stack frame so you can see this will carry our payload of 12 characters in general case when you pass the data which again of which again exceeds the limit of the buffer space it overrides the base address or let's say anything under the buffer space it will be overridden for example it can take 10 characters into buffer 4 into base and 4 into return it can accommodate 18 characters anything after those 18 characters will be stored inside that free stack space right and as soon as you store the data the value of the ei esp header which is again the stack pointer which always points to the lowest memory address esp will start pointing to these 12 characters right now let's see the execution of the payload when you clear up this stack frame when you will just process all this buffer space and when you go back to the base address which is again a valid or invalid but when you execute the instruction through this return address it will execute the jump esp which again points to the now jump esp will first take the value from esp which is again extended stack pointer in our case you can go for directly stack pointer as well but i'm using esp for 64 bit architecture let's say right now when we execute this jump esp it will take the value from esp pointer esp is pointing to our payload and the next instruction would be execute that particular payload so that's how a simple buffer overflow executes so when we pass the data it will store into buffer space if we have extra data it will override the base address if we still have the data it will override the return address and even then if we have the data it will be kept inside this free stack space simple and in our example we take 30 characters 10 is used to fill the buffer space 4 for this base address now 4 are used to point to this jump esp command which let's say somewhere located into this address 0x1234 when we get to this location it will again 
take the value from this current ESP. Now we know current ESP is pointing directly to this payload location and when we get to this payload location it will be executed. Simple.